All right, so now we are recording. Uh, again, let me just officially welcome everybody to the ultimate geothermal greenhouse build. We're going to cover all your questions, and we're going to have Sue make a special announcement here. Start over again. Start over. <laughs> we weren't recording originally, so those the majority of people aren't able to get up here on uh, Easter Eve, um, Eve and watch this, so we want to make sure we have everything recorded here. Okay, so next week's broadcast will be all about herbs. I'll be answering questions, the questions that you have about herbs, any questions. And I have a YouTube channel. I've made some videos, I just haven't posted them yet. It'll be all about herbs and uh, how to preserve them, how to, how to grow them, how to harvest them, how to preserve them, how to make remedies with them. Okay, she has a tagline. I'm gonna to have to kind of coach her here. She's not used to doing things on YouTube. What, so your YouTube channel and is called The Backyard Herbalist. Herbalist. And you can get there by going to? Thebackyardherbalist.net. And what is your tagline? Grow your own, make your own. So there are a lot of great herbs out there, but if you are dependent on getting your herbs from somebody else, then that is a huge bottleneck. So she wants to help people learn how to grow their own herbs and then what and then how to use those herbs. And that's pr primarily what you've been working on, isn't it? Hasn't it? How to <coughs> how to preserve them? How to how use to, them? How to use them? As a matter of fact, um, she is an author. Let me just show you. If you go to LDS Prepper Store and you scroll down here, these are books that three of the books that she has written. We'll add the fourth one once I get the information from her. So this book is on, oh, well, I'll let you explain what these books are about. So after I certified as a master herbalist and was talking to people in the area a lot of them said they want to know what grows here what already grows here that i can use medicinally and so that led me to research a lot of the plants that grow here and i found that a lot of them are weeds just common weeds that have great even extraordinary medicinal properties and i wanted to have that information at my fingertips uh, not everybody can remember everything about every herb or every plant that's out there so i created a reference manual about just 20 common backyard weeds that have great medicinal value and then i helped a friend teach a class on first aid herbs and so i created a manual on 20 common plants that you can use for everyday first aid um, earaches and burns cuts and wounds that kind of thing tummy upsets and uh, so there are 20 herbs in the first aid kit book um, and a lot of and some of them are common weeds that just grow around here uh, the third manual is on basic instructions for making a whole bunch of different remedies everything from of course everybody is interested in the tinctures but also the herbal infusions uh, decoctions oxymels vinegars honeys even um tea, uh, bathtub herbs you know soak throw some herbs in the bathtub and have a good soak and that's a wonderful wonderful way to get herbs in your body the fourth reference manual is on uh, your, your culinary herbs and spices. What do you already have in your kitchen cupboards that can help you medicinally? Um, I was amazed at the health benefits and the medicinal properties of what's in our kitchen cupboards. So those are the four manuals I'm working on. A fifth one on common flower bed flowers and their medicinal properties. So the flowers you put in your yard every spring, 
um, just the common ones, their medicinal value. Okay, so there's a lot of information here. Just come to, and I get a couple screenshots of what's going to be what are in the books. Uh, you can uh, get these books digitally, and you can get a printed version, or you can get printed and digital. So anyway, she'll be going through a lot of that information here next week on the Mr. and Mrs. LDS Prepper, or LDS Prepper and the Backyard Herbalist. Uh, uh, Saturday live broadcast. Since we're all stuck here at home for uh, who knows what the duration is, we thought it'd be fun to be doing these videos together as much as possible on the weekends and uh, give you something more to watch than just Netflix or something else. So you have anything else for the group? All right. No. Thanks very much. You can say goodbye. They can still hear you. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> Till next week. Okay. Thank you, Chair. All right, let's talk greenhouses. Let's talk the ultimate greenhouse. And I'm here to answer your questions. I actually went around this last week and videotaped a walkthrough as if you were here on my property uh, doing a walkthrough. That, those walkthroughs usually take about an hour. We did an hour kind of walkthrough in the original geothermal greenhouse that made out of PVC last week. If you haven't seen that video, uh, I would recommend that you go and check that video out. Uh, just go to, let me just show you here. I'll share my screen. Uh, I'll be going back and forth between sharing screens and, and me today. Uh, so just go to ldsprepper.com. Oh, LDS And then for you just go to videos and here you can see all my latest videos, the latest updates and so forth. Uh, last week um, was when we did the Q&A for the PVC greenhouse. Uh, this week is for building the ultimate greenhouse. Uh, I also recommend that you go to the playlist. The playlists have a lot of information. Uh, for example, I just created this playlist this uh, a couple of days ago. This is how to grow a garden if you are a renter or can't grow a full-size garden, how to do it on your back patio and how to have it automatically watered. So uh, we've got the geothermal greenhouse video somewhere here. There you go, second one. DIY geothermal greenhouse designs and plans. This is where I've got, uh, I'll have all the geothermal videos in here created by me and other people who've done uh, interviews with me. So that's a good place to come. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would recommend that you subscribe and click the uh, bell here. A lot of people um, are either Facebookers or YouTubers. And if you're a Facebooker and you're not used to YouTube, the way that you get notified here is by clicking the subscribe. That gets you subscribed, but it doesn't notify you when I put uh, videos up click the subscribe button at the bell and that that way you get a notification. Uh, I'm putting up videos, I'm trying to do videos three, four times a week. So there's a lot of content here for you guys to uh, look at. So come back often. Let's go ahead and take a look at some questions we have here. And uh, so instead of doing, a, I did an hour long walkthrough and videotaped everything. I, I decided not to just play that walkthrough here today. Um, I'll, I'll post that, but I want to answer your questions that you have on the on the greenhouse today. So, uh, any questions you have that you you've already thought of, just post in the in the chat, or any questions that come up, uh, go ahead and post in the chat. So I'm it's going to be kind of open here. Uh, I'm going to answer your questions. I do have a lot of material. Uh, prepared, but we will uh, answer your questions first. That's my priority for today. So uh, Katie asks, uh, we are very interested in building one later, a geothermal greenhouse this year, down in Franklin County. Do you have available plans that we can purchase? I don't have any plans that you can purchase. I want to make this all available to, uh, to everybody, and I want to um, make sure that 
um, that uh, that you don't have to pay for them. So that's the that's the whole idea is to make sure that they're available to everybody. So uh, I don't have plans. I'm sharing everything I have. I'm sharing here with you. So uh, just uh, take a look at what here. Take screenshots. I may have uploads later, but uh, I, I don't have them right now. Okay. So uh, nothing to purchase here from from the greenhouse. All right. If you want to help support the channel, uh, you can go to LDS Prepper Store and and get the books or get the water filters. Um, get seed banks. I, Seed banks very, very important to have right now. I was talking to, who was I talking to? My daughter. My daughter yesterday, she's putting in a garden and she went to go buy her the, the seeds that she wants and they weren't available. She went to Walmart, she went to Home Depot, she went to Target, uh, she went to Lowe's and the varieties that she wanted to grow that she knows that she likes weren't available and what was there was very limited. So I don't know what your situation is with your seeds, but uh, you, she did not have a good experience uh, finding the seeds that she wanted. Seeds are like gold. I mean, it's it's very important. Okay. Interested in geothermal greenhouse for Alabama? All right, this will absolutely for, work for Alabama. Saying, uh, uh, can you preserve herbs? Yes, my wife will be talking about everything about herbs and tinctures and how to make those. Um, a lot of herb coverage in her channel and, and those uh, broadcasts there. All right, I'm just c c coming through the current questions. What is the minimal depth uh, one can do to lay the pipe and get the benefits? All right, so we'll go right into that. Uh, I have been testing two geothermal uh, systems side by side, literally just feet away from each other in my backyard for the last year. Uh, I've had both of them built for a couple of years and uh, been able to uh, collect the data and and make recommendations and see, not theory, but actual practice here in the Northwest, what would work. So my recommendation is to, uh, for for basically anybody building a greenhouse anywhere who uh, is going to be putting the geothermal tubes underneath the greenhouse, that you put those geothermal tubes that you dig down three and a half feet. You don't need to go down any further than three and a half feet um, with the design that I, that I have with you. And actually, I think there is a benefit from going down three and a half feet. The benefit is, uh, first of all, you're going to save a lot of money in um, uh, excavation. If you're going to have to hire someone, I, I uh, paid $3,000 for the guys that excavated my greenhouses, and that was quite a bit of money. Uh, actually, that was more expensive than the actual greenhouse structure itself. So if you can, and that was uh, five and a half feet deep, and the first one was eight feet deep. So if you can um, minimize having to uh, dig more dirt than you have to, you're gonna you're gonna lower your cost. So I would recommend that you uh, only go down three and a half feet. I have a uh, diagram on that. Let me just see if I can bring that up. Okay, um, by the way, I wanna thank Mike very, very much. He took the time in, in spur of the moment yesterday to uh, make this design for me and uh, he did a great, great job. So if this is your greenhouse, um, I would go down from here to here. Uh, well, actually, Right here, this is ground level. From the ground level down three and a half feet. And there's two different ways you can do this. Uh, and then I would lay the pipes down so that they're one inch, uh, 12 inches away from each other. So either that they're 12 inches on center, which is probably what I would do. And then you just go back and forth uh, and get as much pipe in the ground as possible. We recommend 10% of the uh, cubic foot of the greenhouse. So my greenhouse is, is uh, 20 by 40 by 11 and a half. That gives me 92,000 square uh, cubic feet. So that means I would need 9,200 
lin linear feed of pipe. So if this is your greenhouse, and I would recommend that you have an intake on one side and that the exhaust is on the opposite side. So if this is a 20 by 40 greenhouse or 40 by 80 or whatever length you want, this is completely scalable, for larger or smaller. So there's two different ways to do it. I'll explain one way to do it here first of all, is I would I'd dig out the entire footprint of the greenhouse, three and, a three and a half feet deep, and I would stick four inch thick styrofoam all the way around the walls of the greenhouse, these four walls. You do not need to put any uh, uh, styrofoam down here on the bottom. And I actually don't recommend putting styrofoam down on the bottom. Uh, I, I think it's a waste of money and I don't think that uh, it's necessary at all. The reason why I wanna go shallow is for, is for this reason. These tubes are underneath the greenhouse. The greenhouse structure itself is going to act as an insulator for the uh, for the tubes. So the warmest soil you're going to have in the greenhouse is going to be right underneath the soil because you're going to even in winter have sun coming in and heating that soil. We went out there in February and the soil temperature. My wife put a, a temperature probe into the soil and it was in the 60s or 70s. So your warmest soil is gonna be underneath the greenhouse. We want to keep the, uh, the cold uh, soil from coming, temperatures from coming into the greenhouse. That's why it's critical that you put in four inch thick styrofoam all the way around the perimeter of the greenhouse. Now the soil underneath, the, uh, 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 our frost line is, is like three feet or something like that. Um, four feet is, uh, is going to be below most people's frost line. That's why we have the, the styrofoam all the way around. So I would put down one tube or two tubes or three or four, however many tubes you want. We recommend a minimum of 10% of the cubic space of the greenhouse in tubes. I recommend, uh, personally, if I were doing it, I do one and a half length uh, uh, of the cubic space in tubes. And we're talking four inch thick perforated drain pipe. And I would just weave them back and forth a, a foot apart on the bottom. And for example, here, this being 40 feet long, this would be 40, 80. Uh, you, you can actually get um, eight rows in, in, in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, here's, here's 10 rows, okay? I think mathematically you can get eight rows in here if you're uh, a foot off the wall, the sides, and then you're, you're doing a, a, a foot in between. So however many rows you can get in here, but you're not gonna be able to get it on one level. So you, you'll need to come up. So I would go down three and a half feet, lay down the pipe uh, 12 inches apart on center. And then I would come up, I would put in uh, 18 inches of dirt, or you could even put in 24 inches of dirt. And then put the next row of pipes and do this exact same thing, uh, just uh, 18 or 24 inches higher and then uh, then have your pipes come out on the other end. So if you're doing a single pipe, you can have uh, one pipe, this would be your, in, your intake for example, and this would be over here. You can have one pipe coming out, or you can have one pipe going into two pipes so you can kind of distribute the air more evenly as it blows out and comes across the greenhouse and back into the fan blowing it down into the tubes. You can do two pipes, three pipes, four pipes, in my greenhouse, I did four. You can see that in the playlist that I showed you earlier, uh, that uh, how, how I laid those pipes down and how those would run. So that's what I would recommend for the minimum length and the recommended length. Now there, uh, you can do that uh, by trenching out the entire footprint of the greenhouse. It's very important that when you are filling this back in, then this is actually critical that you are tamping the soil down next to the pipes. Because when you put soil back on the pipes, uh, the soil is gonna to want to settle and it needs some support, something to settle on, and you don't want that to be the pipe. You want this to be tamped down either by your walking over it, or you can get those tampers at Home Depot. Uh, let me see if I can, actually bring up a tamper 
this right here, this one's $32. And it's got a long handle and it's basically a flat part on the bottom and you're just gonna tamp your, all, all the soil down. That's a good job to have for your uh, assistant. All right, so I would tamp this down. That way you will not crush the pipes. We, we wanna make sure that we've got support so when we're adding dirt on top of here and the dirt gets you know, piled up, that we're not crushing the pipe. So make sure you take the time to tamp this down in between all these pipes. So get a couple of those tampers and get people tamping as you're, as you're putting the pipe in. So uh, get an excavator, uh, uh, something like that. You can excavate this out, tamp that down, and then add the soil on top of it, um, another 18 to 24 inches, lay the pipe again as, for a second layer, and then come out the opposite side and then you'll be able to attach the fan on one side and have the blowers on the other side that's one way to do it another way to do it is and this is um, being able to see uh, vertically uh, on the side and this is what we're doing in um in trenches same kind of principle, but we're we're not um, digging out the entire footprint of the uh, footprint of the greenhouse. Um, I would run a trencher, and this is and so this is the second way to put down the geothermal pipes. We're talking about putting down uh, four inch perforated geothermal uh, pipes, and it looks just like this right here. And you can get it at Home Depot or Lowe's, about 70 cents per linear foot. And it's just drain pipe. And you wanna make sure that it's perforated uh, when, you, when it goes underground. Okay, so what I would, another way that you could do this, uh, so you don't have so much dirt to deal with, is you just get a trencher. Now this trencher, uh, for example, is a three hour minimum quote. You can rent it daily, weekly. It goes down five, uh, five feet deep and it, will make a trench width six to 12 inches wide. I would just make a six inch uh, wide trench, then, uh, and you can go five feet deep, so it goes, it's gonna go down plenty deep. And I would use this trencher to trench uh, inside the, the, the greenhouse. I would, if this were, if this were, uh, I, if this were my greenhouse, I would put a trench right here, and I would lay down that pipe, just like that, uh, three and a half feet deep, four feet deep, whatever you want, uh, minimum, um, you, you only need to go down three and a half feet. And make a trench, it goes from end to end on that greenhouse, the full length of that greenhouse. Then I would, uh, because you're making the, the tunnel, the trench just about as wide as the, the um, pipe, you don't really have to worry about tamping down the soil. Then I would uh, put the soil in above it, uh, 18 or 24 inches, and then I would uh, make my other run coming back, uh, then uh, put the soil on top of that and come back the other direction, all right? So uh, if you're gonna do it this way, it'd be down on the ground, three and a half feet, 18 inches, 18 inches, and then coming back and coming out of the ground. I would put that one tube in, just like that, and then I would come back and I would make my next trench. Now, I'm showing you two different ideas here. This is you, you doing it this way with the trencher is one pipe at a time. They're not connected. Just uh, all the pipes come up here in the blower and it comes down. I know this shows eight feet because this is what we did originally, um, but this is not what I recommend. You don't, you don't need to go down eight feet because the tubes are underneath the greenhouse and the greenhouse insulates the geothermal area. So then make another trench, do the same thing, another trench, and just go all the way across every foot, uh, and then you have all your tubes in here. You may have eight tubes going across. You may have 10 tubes going across. And then once you have all the tubes in, then I would get this trencher and I would trench the perimeter of the greenhouse because you need to put down the styrofoam. And again, you can do a six inch trench um, and just make this trench and just drop the styrofoam right down inside that trench making sure the styrofoam is six inches above grade because you want to have a, a total of four feet in depth. And the reason why I'm saying three and a half feet instead of four feet 
is because we want, I re personally recommend making sure that you build this greenhouse six inches above grade for any rain, snow melting, just water protection. And, you know, if it gets flooded, the water's gonna run out. Um, if you don't wanna do it six inches above grade, then dig down four feet, then do everything from four feet down. So that is my recommended depth for any kind of a greenhouse that you have the tubes underground. Now, if you have an existing structure and you want to turn it into a geothermal greenhouse, you can totally do that. What you would have to do is, is, is put your tubes outside of the greenhouse and then run the, the tubes into the greenhouse. So basically you're gonna have your greenhouse, say for example, over here, and you're gonna have your tubes outside and the tubes are gonna run into the greenhouse and then back into, into here. So that's a whole different scenario. You no longer have the greenhouse covering and protecting the tubes from the weather. In that case, I would go down uh, eight feet. I would definitely go down eight feet. And there's a couple ways that you can do that. You can make um, a run that just goes really long and then you have the tube come back in that same run 18 inches higher or, or 24 feet uh, 24 inches higher and then it's going to come back and it's going to go back into the greenhouse and so you instead of having all the tubing underneath the greenhouse you're just going to make a really long tunnel uh, trench and you're going to uh, put down one tube or two or three or four however long however much distance you have um is you know how long you can go you may have not so much distance so you may have to go wider and put multiple tubes in if you're going to do that you want one trench for all the tubes and put the styrofoam on the outside because you absolutely need to make sure that you've got eight feet of, uh, of styrofoam four inches thick on the walls all the way around to keep that cold un unprotected soil temperature from getting into the soil that your tubes are connected to so Best recommendation, uh, easiest construction, least amount of space is putting the tubes right underneath the greenhouse. If you're not able to do that, at, at, you can do that three and a half to four feet. If you're not able to do that, go down eight feet deep, go all and just basically have a, a, a pipe field where you're laying pipe out here. All right, so I hope that helps you understand my recommendation on laying down the tubes. Either you're gonna lay them down flat and you're going to make uh, two or three layers. Yeah, lay them down flat, make two, three layers, or you can build a trench and go over uh, like this. Now, that's for the dirt geothermal greenhouse. We're going to compare temperatures for the results because I've been running two different kinds of geothermal greenhouses. One has been soil and one has been rock. So I want to give you a comparison between the two. So right now, you guys should be seeing that temperature chart here. All right, so this is the backyard porch. I have some lines here that I was going to get set up, but uh, they're not exactly where I want them to be. So I have a control temperature, which is the backyard porch. This uh, you can see over here from this is from uh, end of March into February. And this is the thermometer that I have on my back porch. So I know what the outside ambient temperature is. And I'm really looking for the lows. So the low temperature here is right here on this day. And that looks like it was down in about 28 or so. Looks like it was about 27 degrees for the low temperature outside. This is uh, the blue is the humidity. Um, and then the, the, this other line here, I'm color, uh, I'm colorblind as this is the temperature. So that's the outside temperature. So let's take a look at the soil greenhouse data. So we had the low of 28 degrees. Now we've gotten much lower down to zero, but, uh, for the data that I have here that we're looking at, it was 20, uh, 28 degrees, 27 degrees. So on that same day, that low temperature was right here. And it looks like that was about 38 degrees. So about a 10 degree difference from outside. Now what I have found is 
the, the geothermal works really, really uh, improves its ability to perform the colder it gets outside. So not that it gets warmer in the greenhouse when it gets colder outside, it's just that uh, it, the greenhouse is able to maintain its uh, warmth even when it gets really cold. And I've run this greenhouse with the citrus trees in there in negative 21 degree temperatures. So that's, that's 21 degrees below zero, that's uh, about 50 degrees below freezing, and it was 28 degrees in the greenhouse. So we were able to grow everything that we wanted to except for tomatoes. If we had longer tubes, more tubes underground, the air would get warmer and we would be able to grow tomatoes, uh, keeping it above the 28 degree. So if you want to grow tomatoes in, in uh, freezing weather, literally 21, negative 21 degree weather, it's absolutely possible to do that with this geothermal uh, greenhouse design. Uh, if you have, I would say one and a half, times the length, uh, of the cubic space of the greenhouse in, in tubes. So the coldest temperature we got here was uh, 37 degrees. Now, let me just zoom in a little bit closer here. This center temp, this temperature right here, you see this line here, that's the probe, and that is for the temperature coming out of the tubes. So what happens here is that uh, this tube, these tubes are on a timer. Uh, the blower is on a timer because the fan is so expensive to run. We have it on a timer, uh, and we'll talk about the wattage used from the different fans. So um, this is this is while it's running right here during the night, and then it, the the thermometer warms up during the day. The fan is not blowing, and then the, it comes back on. So the, the coldest temperature that we're getting out of the geothermal tubes, or, or maybe I should say the average temperature, let's just move this up to about here. And the average temperature looks like it was about 47 degrees on average, maybe a little bit better, for the dirt geothermal greenhouse. What we're really primarily most interested in is keeping the temperature in the greenhouse above freezing. And that's what these low temperatures here uh, represent. These are the low temperatures, temperatures for the night. If you can keep uh, things from freezing at night, then you're good. Uh, we were at 37 degrees for the low temperature, so we were completely good. Now let's compare that with the rock geothermal. Now we'll talk about how to build a rock geothermal here in a moment. The rock geothermals seem to have better results. Let's look, first of all, for the lowest temperature and see what that is. So here's the lowest temperature right here. And I'm just going to move that down to that line. OK, so that's the lowest temperature from the geothermal greenhouse. You can see these are the temperatures going up and down. That's the uh, ambient temperature. So for example, the high temperature was like about 87. The coldest temperature. Looks like it was, oh, this line, we're not using this line. The coldest temperature in here was, looks like 42 degrees. 42 degrees for the lowest temperature um, at the same time period as this one here. And the coldest temperature in the soil greenhouse was 37 degrees. So 37 degrees, coldest temperature at night, versus 42 degrees coldest temperature at night in the rock geothermal. So the rock geothermal is without a question um, more efficient, but I don't recommend it. And I'll, I mean, it, if you want the best results, definitely use rock, but uh, I don't necessarily recommend it because I don't think it justifies the cost. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. Let's take a look at the average temperature right here. This right here is the average temperature and I'm going to move this black line because it's really hard to see. That average temperature is so consistent that it's really, really is hard to see. So here's the temperature. I have this uh, going 24-7 um, because during the day when the, when the air is hot, I want to pull that hot air down into the tubes and warm up the, 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 the rock because it's, it's totally rock. I'll show you a 3D model of that. 
So here's the, and you can see it's pretty flat all the way around. It does a little bit of movement here, but this is the constant temperature coming out of the geothermal tubes with the rock down below. Here we go, just really very, very minimal depth, uh, uh, minimal uh, dif differences in the temperatures, even though outside we see, you know, dramatic changes in temperature on the back porch. So by far, um, and by, by several degrees more, the geothermal rock works better. So looking for an average temperature coming out of the geothermal rock, let me just scroll back and forth. Probably need to move that up a little bit. I'm saying about there. And this is five and a half feet down. So it looks like the average temperature is about, coming out of the rock is about 52 degrees. So 52 degrees, average temperature coming out of the rock, in in uh, March, from March 29th through February 4th, uh, April 4th, and in so about 52 degrees there for the rock, and it looks like about 47 degrees for the soil. Now let's take a look at what is involved in uh, creating the rock. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you guys should be able to see this. Uh, we're going down uh, five and a half feet. So we've got a, a four inch thick styrofoam all the way. Oh, I'm going to use the other one. It's, let's see if I can open it up. This is a 3D modeling of uh, really th everything I've got laid out here for the rock geothermal. So the uh, reason why I don't recommend the rock, and it, it without a question, works better, is because of the cost. Uh, in addition to building the greenhouse, which would be the same regardless of what uh, kind of geothermal system you use, the, you're going to have to buy the rock. For my 20 by 40 greenhouse, the rock was about $4,000. So that's $4,000 more than what you would have to spend on, a, on the dirt geothermal greenhouse. The uh, excavation was the same. So. Uh, uh, which was $3,000 between the two different greenhouses. Again, I think you would be able to save on the excavation by only having to go down three and a half feet. Let's take a look at this geothermal greenhouse here that is uh, rock-based. So we're going to go down five and a half feet, and we're going to lay down six inches of rock. And you can see that right here, six inches of screened sewer rock or what they may call a uh, septic rock or something like that. So you're gonna put down six inches of rock all the way around. But before you're gonna do that, you're going to actually put in uh, four inch styrofoam all the way around all four walls. So this would be the rock down here. And then on, on you can see the rock here. And then on top of the rock, we're gonna lay our tubes. And so it just takes a minute to render when I zoom in. And this is, again, the four inch, four inch perforated drain pipe. You can get a, bit, a little better look at that. And these drain pipes are uh, two feet apart and they have uh, capped ends on the ends. So they're just laying on the rock. Uh, the rock is two to three inch in size. Four inches, uh, absolutely the biggest you want, but generally two to three inch in size. And they're just laying all the way across on the bottom of this big trench on the rock. Now, where, where do all those tubes go? Where all the tubes come over here. Let me just kind of swing this around so you can see. Yeah, it does take a, a there is a little bit of lag because this is a lot of rendering going on here. And here, all those tubes down at the bottom are coming up inside of your um, 55 gallon drum. So there's actually two layers of tubes here. One that goes on across the bottom, and then there's another layer right here uh, uh, above it. So this is the intake. I've got my pipe that pulls the, the hot air in from the greenhouse. It goes into a 55-gallon drum. All the uh, tubes that are, are at the bottom of the greenhouse are coming up into this drum, and then I have my fan right here, and I recommend using uh, one fan, and I'll after this is recorded and, and uploaded, I'll have all the links to the items that I recommend. And I do recommend only specifically one fan 
that a brand and model that works extremely well. And uh, I'll have the link below that. And that is the Max Can fan, either in six inch, eight inch, or 10 inch size, depending on how big your greenhouse is. I have a 10 inch size Max Fan Pro, and, and I have that on the lowest speed, and I have a regulator on it at half the lowest speed. That All that detail is in, in my other video that I, I created. So we've got the, the tubes coming into here. This is blowing the air down into the tubes. Then above the, the tubes, so we got six inches of rock. Up, then we have the tubes. I have 10 tubes in my greenhouse. Then we've got another three feet of rock right in here. And then we have the tubes here on top, on top that three feet of rock. So let me see if I can spin this around. So here's these tubes. And then you can see the bottom tubes are going from the, from the intake all the way down across the bottom and then are capped at the end. And then we have the, the same thing happening on, on the top tubes, but they're flipped. Now the caps are on this end. You can see that. And, oh, I need to zoom out. Oh, there we go. And then those tubes come up into the greenhouse and they blow the air into the greenhouse. So that's uh, a lot more work. It is more efficient without a question. Um, but I don't think it justifies the three to four thousand dollars for this size of a greenhouse. Of course, the bigger the greenhouse, the more it's going to be, and the smaller, the less it's going to be. Uh, then, um, then you need to get the the cloth because you need to have a cloth here, and you can see this cloth right here, this fabric, and this is a kind of heavy duty. Uh, it looks like like a felt cloth. And let me just find actually what, what it's actually called. Actually called three ounce drainage and filtration fabric. So you're going to have to buy that too because you're going to need to lay that fabric above the, the, um, the rock so that when you put the soil back on, the soil doesn't go down inside the rock. So uh, it's a great design, a lot more work, works, it works better. Um, but I think the, for most people, the, the, the soil greenhouse is, is the way to go. Let's see. So let's take a look at some data here. So we looked at the temperatures of, the, of coming out of the greenhouse. Let's take a look at the the, the amount of uh, wattage we need to run the equipment. So here is the dehumidifier. We have a dehumidifier, uh, which is absolutely critical to have in your greenhouses. If you don't have dehumidifiers in your greenhouse, you're going to have issues with mold and mildew and fungus. So I ran this uh, dehumidifier for 48 hours. In that 48 in that 48 hour period, uh, we're averaging 470 not 478 watts per hour um, or because it didn't run 24 hours a day it ran whenever the humidity got above I think 42 percent or 11,000 watts 11,000 basically 11 point 11,500 watts per day so that's how much power you're going to have to generate to run that dehumidifier for a 24 hour period right now with the temperatures that we have and the humidity that we have. For the HVAC fan, I have a big box and you've seen this in my other videos in the Dirt Geo uh, Thermal Greenhouse. The HVAC fan, um, I, I ran that for 50 hours on my kilowatt meter. We used 12.31 kilowatt hours. Kilowatt means a thousand watts so averaging 246 watts per hour, and uh, it, it's on a timer. So it only runs from, uh, I think it's 6 p.m. until 9 a.m. And it was using about 6,000 watts a day, running it uh, only however many hours that is a day, from uh, 6 p.m. till 9 a.m. The max fan uh, at low speed and then with the regular at half of low speed, 
uh, used 4.9 kilowatt hours in 24 hour period, averaging about 400, 200 watts an hour. So running 24 seven, um, it used about 5,000 watts in 24 hours. So about 200 watts an hour. So that's the, the if you're gonna be off grid, that's the kind of power, and which we are, uh, that's the kind of power that you'll need to generate to uh, keep the, the greenhouse running. Either um, 5,000 watts, well, either 200 watts an hour for the max fan and an average of about 475 watts for the dehumidifier on an average hour, hourly basis. And this is the, so either it's gonna be the max fan and the dehumidifier if you have one dehumidifier, or it's gonna be the HVAC fan and the uh, dehumidifier. So that's the, the wattage that, uh, that you would need to be using. That was one of the questions that uh, came up the other day. All right, I'm gonna get back to my questions here. A lot of questions have come in. What is the minimum length? Okay, can you give an overview of geothermal greenhouse or is that another video? An overview of the geothermal greenhouse is just really regularly, you know, really a, ge a, a greenhouse that has the ability to be warmed through the temperature of the earth. Geo meaning earth and thermal meaning temperature. So we're just moving air here, which is really efficient, very inexpensive. We're not moving liquids which are more efficient than um, air, but substantially more expensive. We're talking, you know, for this kind of a layout, we're probably talking $50,000, $60,000 just for the geothermal. Um, that's what they typically use in houses, but this is absolutely, all you're doing is turning a fan blade and you're, and you're growing food year round. Just totally makes sense, all right? So there's, there's the, um, you can have geothermal coming off of hot springs. You don't need hot springs this method. All you need is dirt and just dig down below your green, the footprint of your greenhouse and put in the pipes and then put the dirt back in and you're, you're growing food year round. So that's the principle of a geothermal greenhouse. There's different ways to do that. Um, and we're using the most, I think the most efficient way to do that. The most effective way is with the rocks, but that's substantially more expensive. With the cost of the rocks and the material that you'd have to do, build a, a rock geothermal greenhouse, you could build one or two more greenhouses, probably another greenhouse for, for the cost of the materials for the rock. So if, uh, the rock is wonderful. Uh, I'm glad that I have both of them. Uh, it puts out warmer air. And, and with the, um, uh, I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a great design, but for the average person, if I were to do it over it again, I would buy a kit, a greenhouse kit. I would not make it out of PVC, and I would use the soil, uh, the dirt geothermal. Now, let me talk about building greenhouses. The ultimate geothermal greenhouse, in my opinion, is actually a high tunnel, a geothermal high tunnel. So I recommend building, and now I, I, re I recommend for cost wise, I'm, I'm trying to always get the most return out of my investment, whether that investment is time or money. So you can build a high tunnel, a permanent structure high tunnel, like what I have for a fraction, maybe a 10th of the cost of what it would cost to build a greenhouse, a 10th. So that means you can build 10 high tunnels for the price of one greenhouse. Um, and I would do that by buying a kit. I highly recommend and have been using um, agricultural, agriculturesolutions.com, agriculturesolutions.com, not agricultural, but agriculturesolutions.com. They have a great variety of greenhouses. They have great people. I talked to them the other day. They answered their phone right now, even in minimum staff because of the flu. And I sent them an email. They responded uh, very quickly on the email, but they have great pricing and they have a great variety on kits. Now, the advantage of buying a kit is that everything is already pre-built. It has all the bolts with it, comes with all the plastic and the blowers and everything that you need. I go over that in detail, in great, great detail in the video that I, hour long video that I, I created and I'll be posting here uh, later today on the, on the walkthrough in the greenhouse. So. Uh, I would buy a kit. I would 
buy a kit that had six foot straight walls. So you can stand up and you get a lot of headroom. And then it comes in either at a um, gable or a quonset. Either one of those works, okay? A quonset is kind of curved, a gable is more like this and then comes together. I would recommend getting a kit because uh, right now, the uh, federal government will help you with a cost share on that gr uh, greenhouse. My kit cost $2,500. That came with all the bent metal, uh, all the tubing, all the bolts, um, all the plastic, the blower. It did not come with the uh, wood because the wood's much cheaper for you to just pick up here locally at a uh, big box store. And it did not, of course, come with any of the geothermal uh, material like the pipes or the or the uh, fan for the geothermal but anyway for the greenhouse itself you can buy a kit and everything comes with it in the kit my kit cost me twenty five hundred dollars and I, I get paid per square foot from the USDA and their high tunnel initiative program and they paid me twenty eight hundred dollars for the price that they paid me per square foot I go over that in detail in, in my next video. So I would recommend getting a kit because it, it's already pre-made pre for you. I, it's, you. It comes with an instruction manual like, you, you know, like any other kit and you just assemble the parts. And then you get to have a cost share with the, the USDA. So you literally can pretty much build a greenhouse at no cost. I'll go into the details uh, in the other video. So make sure you watch that video. Um, I, in that kit, I would recommend that you have um, two layer inflated plastic. So you have one layer and then you have another layer and you have a fan blowing uh, air in between. That helps with the insulation, it's very important. And that, uh, you, that the sides roll up, that's also very important. That the sides roll up, so, for, so during the summer, all you need is the is a roll of the sides, the air comes through, and uh, I have animal netting up to keep animals from coming inside the greenhouse, skunks and cats and rabbits and you know, deer and everything else. And that has worked very well. Uh, without it, we had animals inside the greenhouse. I would have roll-up sides, and I bought the roll-up side as part of my kit. Get the whatever size greenhouse kit that you want, Contact the USDA Agricultural Extension for your county. Just look up USDA and, and your county name and state. Call them up, and this is the words you need to use. I'd like to get the High Tunnel Initiative Packet. That's the, you're speaking their language now. And then they're going to mail you a packet, or you can walk into the office and pick up that packet. High Tunnel Initiative Packet. You're going to fill out the forms. Uh, you're going to uh, here in my area. We applied in November, get approved at first of the next year. And then after you build it, they will come and measure it, make sure that you meet the specifications, which I go over in the other video. And and then the spe specifications come in the packet. And then you will get a check from the USDA. I got mine like a week later after they came and looked at it. And uh, you get reimbursed for, your, for the cost of the greenhouse. So um, that's why I recommend in a, the ultimate greenhouse is actually a high tunnel. If you build a greenhouse with polycarbonate that does not qualify for the USDA high tunnel initiative. So uh, if you wanna build a gorgeous greenhouse and make it look beautiful, that's awesome. Just realize that you're not going to get uh, a cost share from the USDA. Um, I have a friend here who is actually a contractor and uh, in Rexburg, and he builds geothermal greenhouses. And he builds beautiful geothermal greenhouses, custom built geothermal greenhouses, and they work great and they look beautiful. And so if you're in the Idaho Falls area, uh, just, just make a comment and I'd be glad to share you his contact information. Um, and he does a great job. So for return on investment, I think the high tunnel kit with the geothermal dirt geothermal system with the max fan blower is really the best situation all right um how do you get rid of condensation water in the pipes underground i guess the 
uh, I guess it develops mold with time. How do you clean that? So great question. First of all, you have a dehumidifier in your greenhouse. Make sure that that's set up. Second thing is that's why we're using perforated drain pipes underground because the perforation will allow any condensation in the pipes to be literally um, siphoned or pulled out uh, through the contact of the soil uh, in the pipe. So you will not have a uh, condensation problem. We have found with the solid pipes that they do fill up with, uh, or they either do or they can fill up with uh, water if you don't have a dehumidifier running or if you're not running your blowers all the time. If you're running your blowers all the time, just the air movement through the pipes uh, will uh, cause the water to evaporate that does condense in the pipe. So run the, the blower 24-7. Um, I recommend running the blower 24-7. And that's why I recommend the max fan. It's gonna, you're going to save a lot of electricity there. You're going to be able to run it on a lower speed, so the motor's going to last a long time. Uh, the max fan is a lot less expensive than buying an HVAC blower, and it uh, works better. And by the way, it's more efficient to push the air than it is to pull the air. Uh, what would you do differently if you build another greenhouse? And that's what I would do. I would, what I would do differently is I'd go down three and a half feet. I lay down, personally, I'd lay down one and a half. Uh, uh, and so instead of 10% uh, of the linear, uh, instead of 10% of the cubic space of the greenhouse, I would lay down 10.5% of the cubic space. So instead of, for example, 9, 000, uh, 8, 800 linear feet of pipe, I'd put down 1,200 linear feet of pipe. The more pipe you have, the uh, warmer the air comes out. That's basically how, how that works. So I'd, I'd, I'd buy a kit, six foot straight walls, roll up sides, and put the, the geothermal below it. All right, uh, is corrugated pipe too restrictive for airflow? Fan CFM recommendation. All right, so you want the corrugated pipe. You want that turbulence in the pipe for three for a couple of reasons. Let me just share my screen here. All right, so you see all these ridges here. This is the kind of pipe that we want. We want the turbulence in there. That's going to help warm up the air. But by having these this corrugated uh, pipe, what's actually going to happen is that we get triple the surface area in contact with the soil. Instead of if it were flat, uh, we're losing two thirds of the surface area, which is going to reduce the efficiency of the thermal transfer from the dirt to the air. So uh, definitely use corrugated pipe. We want the turbulence, we want the extra surface area, and that's why I recommend using that. Um, as far as CFM, I, prop, you know, I'm using a 10 inch fan and it's on the lowest speed and it's on half that lowest speed. So uh, that's for a 40 by 20 greenhouse. You, uh, you could probably easily get by with a six inch fan or an eight inch fan. Uh, CFM, I'm, I don't know, but the fans, I do know that work and, and move enough air are the Max Fan Pro series and with, with the regular. I'll have links again below this video where to get those. Those are kind of hard to find. What's the smallest footprint one can build? I don't know, but it's completely scalable. All you really need to do is make sure that you have at least 10%, 10.5%, my recommendation, of uh, pipe for the cubic space, and you should be fine. Uh, so if you want to build a 10 by 10 greenhouse, that's fine. Um, it's a, it's, or, you know, 200 feet long, it's totally scalable. Last week, you briefly spoke about a program government. Okay, I just call, talked about that. It's called the High Tunnel Initiative um, Packet or a High Tunnel Initiative Program. Isn't the exhaust supposed to be in the opposite end of the intake on the, the uh, yes. And that diagram that, I, that Mike made for me, so kind for him to do that just on the spot. I would have the intake on one side and the exhaust on the other side. That way the air is coming in and it's going down through the tubes and coming back out and it's blowing back across the intake. And so it creates a nice circular closed loop. What is the reason for three and a half feet uh, depth? I think I just, I think I discussed that. Uh, if you wanna make your, your greenhouse 
uh, not six inches above grade, then dig down four feet. Three and a half feet is the maximum you need to dig if you're putting the pipes underneath the greenhouse. Uh, why can't you get away with the spacing of pipes only 12 inches apart, but you have the layered 12 to um, 18 apart? Uh, well, uh, you can space them out um, 18 inches apart or 24 inches apart. It's just a matter of getting enough pipe uh, in the below the greenhouse to make sure that you have 10% of the cubic space of the greenhouse in linear length of the pipes. So you work out the math however you want to get the pipes in there. Um, you can put, put them further apart uh, or, or closer. It's really up to you. Uh, living in living in Central Texas, I am interested as much as cooling, maybe even more than heating. Um, I this is not designed for heating or cooling in hot temperatures. Um, what I built in in Texas when I lived in Houston was an in the garden in the garden greenhouse, and that is in uh, the complete designs are in the uh, Mint Lighter Gardening Course book, uh, which is my bible for gardening. Um, if I were gardening and I had to grow food as if my life depended on it, I would absolutely 100% follow that Midlady Gardening Course book. You can get that at the LDS at ldsprepperstore.com. Uh, it's in stock. We can ship it immediately. Uh, however, the geothermal principle works with any gardening method that you want to use. So, um, if I were in Texas, I would build an in the garden greenhouse and I wouldn't build a, a geothermal one. I don't think it's um, necessary um, in Texas, uh, when you mentioned central or south Texas, to have a full blown geothermal greenhouse. I think if, uh, and you're primarily worried, worried about cooling. What I would do is I would build a geo, I would build an in the garden greenhouse as designed in the Midlighted Gardening Course book. And I would put shade cloth over the top. And I would have the sides that roll up. So you have air that moves through and you have the shade cloth that protect it from the uh, intense sun uh, during the middle of the day. That worked great for me in Texas. I did not have any problems in Houston uh, with uh, my plants getting too hot. And it's a, you don't need to do a geothermal to cool it. Just you need to put up some shade cloth. Where can you get shade cloth? Uh, my, I bought my shade cloth at agricultural at agriculturesolutions.com. I bought my plastic for my uh, in the garden greenhouse, uh, the six mil uh, UV protected plastic from agriculturesolutions.com too. If you use the trenching method, the tubes are laid singly with each having an intake and an out instead of connecting in the rows. Correct, absolutely correct, except for the intake all come up together, all these tubes come up together inside that 55 gallon drum with the blower on top. So what it would look like is that all the tubes are coming up into this 55 gallon drum, just like that. Down here, you can see the, the maybe you can, maybe you can't. You can zoom in here. This is the HVAC fan in here, and all the tubes are coming into that HVAC fan. So you use the same principle. This all the tubes are going in here, and then they they're coming out separate, like you can see here, where there's kind of space set on the other end of the greenhouse. All right, the trenching idea is awesome. Thank you. Let's go through here from a geo basic dome shaped greenhouse. Yes, absolutely. Um, a greenhouse, a high tunnel, anything you want to do to protect your, to, to keep the temperature that you're producing from the geothermal uh, inside, protect it from the outside temperature, a geodome would, be, would work fine, yes. As long as you have plenty of sunlight getting in. Okay, so I've got some yeses that you can see what I'm sharing. What kind of a dehumidifier are you using? Uh, that is a crazy amount of electricity to generate or, or for one dehumidifier. Um, I'll have a link. Um, it's a, I think they call it a 70 quart um, dehumidifier. I will have a link for that uh, after this video goes, um, after the live broadcast. 
with a shallower depth for pipes, how much summer cooling benefit will there be? Uh, will be lost again. This geothermal is designed specifically to grow in cold weather, to grow food year round. The, for the cooling is completely controlled by rolling up the sides. You do not need to worry about cooling at all. Anywhere that I've seen, literally on the earth, you do not need to worry about cooling this. Uh, if all you do is roll up the sides, um, and if, if uh, that will allow enough air to go through and keep the, the plants growing uh, fine in the summer. And if you need to, you can add shade cloth over the top of the greenhouse. Is the PV P is PVC or steel pipe kit better? You cannot buy a PVC kit. That would be a DIY project and would not uh, uh, meet the requirements for the USDA High Tunnel Initiative Program. Um, is the PVC or steel pipe kit better? Personally, if I were to do it again, I would buy the steel kit uh, because primarily because uh, I can get my money back or a large portion of it from the USDA. But in addition, uh, I can roll up the sides. Uh, it's very quick and easy to build. And uh, um, it just makes more sense to me. Uh, both of them are very strong and very, you know, will last a long time. Uh, do you think this would work in the southern U.S.? Would you do it in Tennessee? Yes, absolutely. There is a geothermal greenhouse, for a friend of mine, in Tennessee that has this. Uh, what about overheating? Uh, overheating is not an issue. We just roll up the sides. Do you need vents at the peak of the greenhouse? So I am adding, um, I call them baffles, but they're, and they said, this is covered in my other uh, video that I'll upload later today, in, in the walkthrough through the uh, geothermal, uh, the ultimate geothermal greenhouse. So this one's gonna be labeled um, ultimate geothermal greenhouse Q&A. The other one's gonna be la labeled ultimate geothermal greenhouse walkthrough. In there, I talk about exactly how, how to put everything together, what to do first, what to do second, uh, what components, uh, um, all, all that, and uh, the venting. So I do need venting from uh, fall through winter to early spring, because what happens, it gets really, really hot. It'll get 120 degrees in that greenhouse in February. It, it could be 30 degrees out, below freezing outside, and it'll be 100, over 100 degrees in the greenhouse if it's a clear, sunny day. So what I recommend, uh, uh, doesn't take any electricity, is the, new, I think it's called pneumatic uh, pistons, and they have, uh, they have sh like shutters. And so uh, I would have them up on the uh, the top part of the greenhouse on the on the ends, uh, east and uh, the east and west sides, uh, uh, up high. And then when the greenhouse starts getting hot, the 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 windows automatically open, the baffles kind of automatically open. The air comes through, cools it. When it starts cooling down in the evening, it closes. So that totally regulates it. That's all uh, you will need for that time of year when you don't have the sides rolled all the way up. Uh, for growing, so that works well. I'll have a link for those shutters down below. Well worth well worth uh, doing that. Um, is it more efficient to have two max fans, one for the pipes and three and a half feet, and another for pipes at two feet? Uh, no, I really don't think you need more than one max fan. You you can if, if you want to, but you're running either one pipe, two pipes, three pipes four pipes, however you're gonna lay it down. Uh, and I would just use one max fan. I have found that one max fan uh, moves enough air um, for all the air that I need to move through the greenhouse. Uh, remember, I'm moving the air through as, as slow as I can. So the longer it's in contact with the soil down inside the pipe, the, the warmer it's gonna come out. So I wanna move it as slow as I can, not fast. I'm not trying to exchange the air every 30 minutes or something like that. I'm trying to heat up a greenhouse. And so the max fan that I have, the 10 inch one, was probably overkill for what I'm doing. Uh, so the six or eight inch fan on low or medium speed would probably be absolutely fabulous for the size of the greenhouse that I have, which is 20 by 40. How do you build six inch above grade and still have the dirt be the floor? Um, yeah, so that's exactly what we did here. We just, uh, just like when you build a house, my house is above grade. Uh, when they built this house, they they kind of pulled the dirt up and then 
that was the new grade and then they uh, build that build the greenhouse so you're just going to bring dirt up uh, all the way around the greenhouse so that you're above grade so any water um, uh, sloughs off away from the greenhouse um, just make the ground higher is all, all you need to do does the greenhouse does the greenhouse have to be geothermal to qualify for, qualify for the USD USDA program it does not need to be geothermal but I tell you what, they were ecstatic and they have been here multiple times and send people here all the time and, and talk to tell, share our greenhouse because they're so excited about the geothermal aspect of it. So the geothermal aspect does, is not a requirement, but it certainly is a bonus and people are excited about it because people are able to grow their own food and commercial growers are able to grow their food at a lot lower cost because they're using a lot less uh, fossil fuels to heat the greenhouse. Will this be posted on YouTube or will the video with the associated links be posted somewhere else? All those videos will be here uh, on my YouTube channel. They will all be in the uh, geothermal greenhouse playlist. Uh, have you ever needed to use supplemental heat? Uh, I propane electric heater is this with this geothermal system? Great question. The answer is yes. The first year when I was figuring this out, since then I have not needed to have um, any su supplemental heat at all. I know others have wood burning stoves in their greenhouses. I know others uh, have in addition wood, they have geothermal, they have wood burning stoves, they have electric heat rods in the soil. Um, that uh, totally goes against what I'm trying to do here and that is grow food as e economical as possible and for the average Joe. So the first year when I was building my first greenhouse, um, I, uh, I had 18 tomato plants that I lost in one night because it, the temperatures fell below 20 degrees. So I put in a propane heater while I was figuring this out. And what I figured out was I need two inches thick styrofoam on the, the north side of the greenhouse all the way up to the arch. I need to have both ends completely insulated and I can have the whole south side from the arch peak of the greenhouse all the way down on the south side completely open. And with that two inch thick of styrofoam and the geothermal, I do not need any supplemental heat and have not used any supplemental heat since that first year. So while I was figuring this out, how much insulation I needed, I had the propane, but no more, no need at all. Don't even need to bring it in. Okay, please clarify. One photo you show the corrugated pipe in the ground had caps, but the other photo showed the pipes connected with uh, connected with both ends coming up in the greenhouse and air cycling through. What is the difference? So in the rock geothermal, let me share my screen. Okay, so here are the pipes coming into the greenhouse, and these this is the top layer of pipes, and they all go down here and they're capped. And they got six inches, they're on top of three and a half feet of rock, and then they got six inches of rock on top, and then they're capped here at the end. And these are all perforated pipes, and then these come out into the greenhouse. Down below here, these are capped on this end, and on the other side, they're all going into a uh, intake drum right here. And so this this air, this is for the rock geothermal. This is pulling the air in, the hottest air from the greenhouse up at the top, pulling, pushing it down into these tubes, into these perforated tubes. The air is coming out uh, through these perforated tubes, through the rock, heating up the rock. And then the this has got um, uh, 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 soil uh, on top of it. So this is basically a sealed chamber. Now we're pressurizing it by blowing the air into here. The air is going through the rock. It's, it's looking for a place to come out. What it, what it does, it finds the tubes here on top, which is perforated, and then it comes out here into the greenhouse, just, just like that. Hopefully that answers your question. What is the most efficient direction for the orientation of the greenhouse? Absolutely critical question. It is absolutely um, um, important that if you don't wanna to have to use supplemental heat, that you just wanna use the geothermal, that you have the broad side facing south. So you get the ends facing east and west, the sides facing north and south. That's gonna let the most amount of sun into the greenhouse during winter. Again, this is primarily to grow food year round in cold weather. 
So if you're below the equator, you're going to have the north side exposed. That's where the sun's going to come in. You're going to have the south side insulated. If you're above the equator, you're going to have the south side open. Brainstorming. How about using solar panels direct to heat water heating tank? No inverter, no grid. Uh, panels are cheap. They could. There's lots of other ways you can heat a greenhouse. All right. So I'm just talking about the geothermal. If you want to do solar, that's perfectly fine. It's great. I mean, I'd love to see what you're doing, but that's not what we're talking about here. Um, but sure, give it a try. Apart from having to be a kit, what other requirements does the USDA require for its reimbursement? So I don't know if there are different, if it's different by state or by county or if it's the same, but uh, pretty much what I what I remember from the requirements, and there's three different levels of require, uh, three different levels of reimbursement uh, from the USDA. So I signed up as a, a new farmer. I had that area where I had my greenhouses designated as a farm. So agricultural tax break there. Um, you're not able to put tables in the first year is a, a, one of the requirements. Uh, it cannot be on a place where you had a cattle. It could be a place where you had lawn. It could be a place where you had um, uh, a garden, but you can't have had livestock on that area for the first for the previous year. And I think that was it pretty much. Uh, no tables for the first year and can't be over where uh, livestock was. And that was pretty much it. So on a soil geothermal greenhouse, you don't cap the caps and the rock geothermal greenhouse, you have caps on the pipes. Yep, you got it. A exactly. All right, so this is the trenching method. Uh, this is the uh, dig out the whole footprint method. Uh, this is a side view of, of doing multiple layers. Again, intake on one side, exhaust on the other. This is making sure that you got four inch thick styrofoam all the way around. I get my styrofoam from a roofing company here. This is the end view um, showing the rock geothermal, six inches of rock below you get your pipe space two feet apart you've got your uh, rock uh, another three feet of rock here your pipes and then another six inches of rock so a total of four feet of rock uh, you got your four inch thick styrofoam on the side you've got your three ounce drainage filtration across the 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 rocks above the top line of pipes you have your 18 inches of soil and your greenhouse over it uh, uh, here's showing the pipes on the top layer capped on one end because we want all the air that's being pushed up through the soil to come out this end of the pipe. It works great, really, really well. So this is what it looks like with the pipes on above. Nothing's connected on, on, the, on either end. It's capped on that end, and then the, the pipes are coming up into the greenhouse that way. And then this is the lower end. This is the air pulling down through the fan, through the 55-gallon drum, and then the pipes being spread out through the greenhouse on the bottom layer and the down here, they're capped here. So the air is coming out through the perforation up to the rocks. This is showing the pipes on one end of the greenhouse, the exhaust and the intake on the other side of the greenhouse. All right, I th um, you said that you had citrus trees in there. Would you keep them in pots or would you plant them? Uh, that is in the ultimate, geothermal greenhouse walkthrough and I do have them in pots to limit their growth and to be for uh, portability so I can move them around. So I do recommend I have them in great big uh, you know half whiskey barrels. So yes, I do I do rec recommend that. Okay. Um, you can plant them in the soil if you want, but I just wanted to make them smaller. Trenching and using rock would be more cost effective. I don't, and we've tried this, uh, and our experience was that if you're trenching and putting rocks in, that there isn't enough rock. Well, I guess it would be kind of a combination of rock and soil, wouldn't it? So, um, oh, 
Boy, I don't know. I don't. I don't think that's going to work. Uh, it hasn't worked with when we've tried it, uh, because uh, the pipe would be touching the rock, and there isn't enough rock mass to heat up and store the warm air to keep the warm air coming out through the night. So I would not do a combination of a trench, put rock in there, put a pipe in there, and then put dirt in there. Um, I don't think there's enough volume of rock uh, to hold the air temperature. So I, it might work. Uh, if, you, if you build it, please let us know and let us, how, let us know how that goes. Okay, I'm just sharing you what my experience and uh, you know, years of experience in actually doing this in the field. So hopefully that works. Um, all right, so um, I will be putting links down below this video uh, to all the different materials and show you how to um, uh, get those materials that you need. Thank you for being here. Oh, was radon ever a consideration? Good question. Uh, radon is a consideration just like it would be in your basement. So if you want to do a radon test, uh, absolutely do that. Um, I have not heard of any radon problems in my area, but you can certainly do a radon test. You can buy a radon detector at, in, on Amazon, I think, and, and test for radon. Uh, it was not a concern. I haven't had any indication at all that I have a radon problem. All right. Uh, thank you very much. The information is golden. Thank you. We love your channel. Appreciate you sharing uh, and uh, experience with us. I love having you here. I love sharing. Uh, I was doing some family research, and I found out that my family name, Gilmore, means head servant. And when I found that, I, I kind of set me back and made me think that if I'm going to be a servant to people, I want to be the best servant, a head servant. And so I really try to do my very best in sharing everything I do. And uh, hopefully it blesses your lives as it has blessed our lives. So thank you for being a part of my experience, for your comments, for uh, supporting us by going to the LDSPrepperStore.com. And I uh, look forward to a lot more videos. I have a lot of videos already shot, and I'm just editing them. It takes about an hour per finished minute to put up a video. So thanks a lot. You guys have a great weekend. Happy Easter, everybody. Let's all uh, grow our food and uh, teach our neighbors how to grow food, and we will all benefit. Be blessed.